I want to thank God also for the pastor for uh, giving me this platform with which to be able to share with us. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you that despite everything that is going on, against all odds, you have kept us alive. We know, Lord, that it is not by anything that we can do, but because of your love and your mercy. Father, we thank you for bringing us to the 17th day of July in the year 2020. We say thank you. Father, even as we go into your word and prayers, we welcome your presence, sweet Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, even as this word is shared. And also, Lord, we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will empower us to pray. Holy Spirit, just take over. Take over. Just use my lips as your oracle. Do that which only you can do tonight. And let the name of the Lord alone be praised. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Um. Two, last two Sundays that uh, God gave me the privilege to minister, the Lord had said we should speak on the glory of the latter house. And as I was preparing for tonight's uh, uh, session of ministry and prayers, I was asking the Lord, and he told me again the glory of the latter house. Oh, I said, okay, we are continuing. He said, yes, but there's another angle to which you want to take it. So we're in the glory of the latter house, part three. The Glory of the Latter House, Part 3. And I shall read for us, and our text, our text is Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 and verse 9. Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 and verse 9. After that, we have a second one, a quote text, but I'll read Haggai chapter 2 first. Haggai chapter 2 from verse 1. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the words that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear not. Verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Please, there's, there's a lot of interference. I don't know where it's coming from. Ezra chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. Ezra 3, 9 to 30, because we have to have context for what was said in Haggai chapter 2. Ezra chapter 3, verse 9. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah together. They set forward the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Henadad, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by cause in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people for the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off. There's a lot to this story, but there are certain things, basically, that the Lord wants us to bring out so we can pray. I hope you have on your prayer shoes. 
your praying mouth and of course with the help of the Holy Spirit because most of what we are going to do tonight is to pray. Now this is the story of the rebuilding of the temple at Jerusalem. Solomon had built it, walls, captivity and so on had destroyed it. Then in Ezra chapter 8, we read of the plan to rebuild the temple. And then the temple was rebuilt, but the session we're looking at is when the foundation was laid. There are certain things for us to bring out uh, in this story straight away, just to, you know, because there's a lot to it, but the parts that are relevant. One, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, who was the governor, and Joshua, the son of Josadak, who was their high priest, and all of their brethren, they began to rebuild the temple. They wanted the restoration of what had been lost. Because uh, uh, Solomon's temple, when it was built, was very magnificent, and with a lot of invasion and so on and so forth, they had lost, in, they had lost the building. The second thing we found that when they now laid the foundation of the building, they decided to hold a thanksgiving service for God enabling them to get this far. Because if you read the stories in Ezra and Nehemiah, you find that the children of Israel in trying to rebuild both the wall of Jerusalem and the temple, they came across a lot of opposition. So when they had laid the foundation that they could get that far, they held a thanksgiving service. And we learned from that straight away, don't take the grace of God for granted. The fact, for instance, that we're alive today, despite what is going on in the world, is something not to be trivialized, but to thank God for. They did not take the grace of God for granted when they remembered when, where they were coming from. Then the third thing now is when the foundation of the rebuilding, when the new foundation was laid, those who were seeing that foundation, they made a lot of noise. They were very happy that God had actually allowed them in his mercy to lay the foundation of the temple. So the younger ones, they rejoiced and shouted for joy. They were seeing this for the first time. But the older ones, the next thing we learn is the older ones. The Bible called them the ancient. That means they must have been very old. The Bible said they had seen the original temple. They had seen the magnificence of the temple, the original temple, the Bible says they wept with a loud voice. They saw the difference between the magnificence, the glory of the first temple, and what had been done so far that the younger ones who did not know it were rejoicing over. The Bible said the noise of rejoicing was as loud as that of weeping, that nobody could tell the difference between them. But let's go back. In Haggai 2, we read it 3 to 5 and verse 9. I will read it again because God made a promise. God asked, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Meaning that God will say, what you are seeing now that you are all rejoicing over is nothing compared to what it was before. Mm. But then he went on and said, yet now be strong. O Zerubbabel, said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and walk, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. I want us all to know tonight, no matter where we are, no matter what you have been going through, God is with you. And the Lord went on in verse 5 to say, According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear not. And then he now made that promise. We've read it earlier. I'm reading it again in verse 9 of Haggai 2. He said, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, God was saying that what you are saying now may seem good to you. What may be happening in your life now may seem good to you because you've never been down this road before. But those who have been down this road, those who have seen it, they are crying because it's not like what it used to be. So God will say, well, I promise you that by the time I am done with you and this temple, the glory at the end will be even greater than the very magnificent one that the ancients had seen. And what, that is what God is saying to somebody today. That what, by the time God is finished with you, you yourself will marvel because you will find that where God will take you to will be much, 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 much greater than where you were before that you thought was very good or what you are even seeing now. God has not finished with you yet. The implication is that one, for God to say that the glory of the latter will be greater than the former, it means God is getting ready to give somebody a new beginning. 
He's ready to give somebody a new beginning, which will make you say, ah, clearly the glory of the latter house is greater than the former. Meaning that even the latter thing that was so good that I thought I lost, what God is doing right now is so much greater than it. Then secondly, means God is also ready to restore all that you have lost. He's going to give you full restoration and go beyond. Because right now with all of this COVID, yes, we are planning a lot of things. We are thinking a lot of things. But it is only God who knows how things will really, really play out. But our prayer and our trust is that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Many don't know what is going to happen. Many don't know how their lives are going to play out. But God is saying, get ready. You will not only get full restoration, you will get over and above. The third thing that is implication for us is, don't settle for less. Because it's going to make the latter end much better than where, where you are starting from, even where you are now. Don't settle for less until you get beyond to beyond where you were before that you thought was glorious. It also means, the first thing that is the implication, is it means no matter where you are now, you must keep pressing on and aiming higher till you can truly say, indeed, the glory of the latter house is greater than the former. Which also means, therefore, that we must get rid of all glory killers. Brethren, our major thrust tonight is in prayers. We are going to pray because what God wants is that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. From our scripture, we find that the ancients, the ones who had seen the building of Solomon, were crying. When those who hadn't seen it were saying, hey, Oh, this is a beautiful thing. Ah, what God is doing now, what is enabling us to do? They were saying, you, eh, you haven't seen anything. Even God himself asked through Haggai, which of you here saw this thing before? Don't you find that what you are seeing now that you are rejoicing over is nothing compared to what you had before? It means that God was telling them, you, what you are seeing now that you think is good, yesterday was better. No, no, no. May you never know a better yesterday. May you never say, Kai, yesterday was better. No way. No way. The plan and the purpose of God is that the glory of the latter house will be much greater than the former. Which means we must pray, we must destroy all glory killers, and we must grab a hold of what we need to do. Brother, we are going to go into prayer. This is a vigil. It's a time, and vigil is a time of prayers, worship, and the word. We've worshipped, we've shared the word, and we are going to pray. And the first prayer we are going to pray is we are going to thank God for enlightening our eyes with his word. Because many people, we settle for less. We're so, so at times we are easily satisfied in the sense that people have struggled so much and pushed. At least this one is good. But God is saying that this one that you are saying is good is not even as good as where you think you were before. Where I'm taking you to is so high. So our first prayer. I don't know if I'm allowed to say we should all unmute. I want to hear you pray so that nobody falls asleep. Because these prayers are very, very crucial prayers. So the first prayer you pray, you say, Father, thank you for enlightening my eyes to your word. Brethren, please pray that prayer. Pray. I will try and make the prayer simple and I'll say it slowly so you can get it and pray. You pray, Father, Thank you for enlightening my eyes to your word. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray, brethren, pray. I said, because I will pray my own prayer. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for enlightening my eyes to your word. Thank you, Father, for showing me that what you really, really want is much, much better than where I am. Baba, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for enlightening my eyes to your word. Thank you, Father, for enlightening my eyes to your word. Spirit of the living God, I thank you for causing the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened. Thank you, Father, for helping me to see that where you want me to be is much, 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 much better than where I am. Father, Lord, help me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for enlightening my eyes to your word. Thank you, Lord, for enlightening my eyes to your word. Thank you, Father, for enlightening my eyes to your word. Sarea Baba Bako Roboshi, Sarea Baba Bako Roboshi, Sarea Baba Bako Roboshi, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for God in the eyes of understanding to be enlightened. Thank you, Father. Thank you for enlightening my eyes to your word. Thank you, 
Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for lending my eyes to your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, brethren, we are going into some really deep waters. We are taking it step by step. The next prayer, you say, Father, Father, no matter what, let me never settle for less in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. Father, no matter what, no ma- let me never settle for, settle for less in mm-hmm. Jesus' name. Pray, mm-hmm. brethren, pray. Pray, Father, no matter what, no matter what, no matter how nice it is, let me never settle for less. 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 Let me Father, let me never settle for less. Let me never settle for less in Jesus' name. Father, I will not settle for less. 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 Era baba bako roboshi. Era baba bako roboshi. Sara baba bako roboshi. Sara baba bako roboshi. I will not settle for less. Father, I will not settle for less. 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 Let me never settle for less. Let me never settle for less. I will never settle for less. I will never settle for less. I will never settle for less. Let us never settle for less, Lord. By your spirit, guide us, help us. Let us never settle for less. No matter what, no matter what, Father, let me never settle for less. Let me never settle for less. Let me never settle for less. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Amen. next prayer we are going to, the next prayer we are going to pray. You remember I said that when the younger people were rejoicing that ah, we've laid this beautiful foundation. The older one said, ah, what we saw, what we had before, is much, much, much better for this than this. That means they were indirectly saying the yesterday of this temple is better than this one. Now you are rejoicing. Father, we are going to pray, Father. Let me never know a better yesterday. Father, let me never say yesterday was better than today. That will never happen in my life. So you pray, Father, let me never know a better yesterday. Let my light keep shining brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. Brethren, pray. Father, let me never know a better yesterday. Let me never know a better yesterday. Let me never say, ah, yesterday was better. No, 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 Lord. Let my light keep shining brighter and brighter and brighter. Sarea bako roboshi. Era baba bako roboshi. Indra baba bako roboshi. Kera baba bako roboshi. Sarea baba bako roboshi. Era baba bako roboshi. 
Tarea Baba Bako Roboshi, Indra Baba Bako Roboshi, Father, Father, let me never know a better yesterday. Let me never know a better yesterday. Let there never be a time when I will say, Ah, yesterday was better than today. No, Lord. Tarea Baba Bako Roboshi, Tarea Baba Bako Roboshi. Let my light keep shining brighter and brighter in Jesus. The Baba Mew Baba. Let us never know better yesterday in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in your church. Let us never know better yesterday. Let our light keep shining brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Father, let us not know better yesterday. Let us never know better yesterday. Sarea Baba Bako Robushi. Sarea Baba Bako Robushi. Indra Baba Bako Robushi. Sarea Baba Bako Robushi. Sarea Baba Bako Robushi. Era Baba Bako Robushi. Sarea Baba Bako Robushi. Sarea Baba Bako Robushi. Sarea Baba Bashi Baba. Let me never be satisfied. Let us never be satisfied with what we had yesterday. That they will be saying that yesterday was better than today. No, Lord. Let us never know a better yesterday. Let your glory, let our light be con- continue to shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Lord. Let us never know a better yesterday. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Now the promise of God is that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. But we also need to know that there are glory killers. There are those who don't want us to, uh, to, to operate at the level of glory that God has purposed for our lives. So the next set of prayers now, we are going to destroy all the glory killers. The first one are attacks that will come from home. Joseph's brethren, it was his own brethren that attacked him, but they did not know that because God always makes all things work together for good, they delivered him. When they thought they were getting rid of him, they were taking him back, they were actually taking him to the place where God wanted him. But they wanted to kill him. The first attack was to kill him, just that God did not allow it. So you are going to pray, you say, Father, I come against every attack from home. It will not prosper over my life in the name of Jesus. As you deliver Joseph, deliver me. Brethren, pray, Father, I come against every attack from home. It will not prosper over my life. As you deliver Joseph, deliver me. Whichever form the attack from whom is taken, whatever arrow, whichever form, carrier back or she, it will not prosper. Father, I come against every attack from whom, every attack from whom, carrier Bashi, of whatever form, of whatever sort. Lord, I decree it will not prosper over my life. As you deliver Joseph, you will deliver me. The attacks from home that want to destroy my glory, that want to destroy my destiny, that want to destroy your purposes for my life. Father God Almighty, I come against it in the name of Jesus. I come against it. It will not prosper. It will not prosper over my life. It will not prosper over my life. You are the God who delivered Joseph. You will deliver me. You will deliver us. You will deliver us as individuals. You will deliver us as families. You will deliver us as a church. Father, every attack from home. I come against it. I come against it. It will not prosper over my life, over our lives, in the name of Jesus. Whatever form the attack is taken, whatever form the attack is taken, Father, I come against it. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. You are the God who delivered Joseph and ultimately he sat on the throne and the same people attacking him came back to bow towards him. Ah, Baba, you will deliver me. You will deliver us as a family. You will deliver us as individuals. You will deliver us as a church. Every attack from home, from whichever angle it is coming. Baba, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Era baba bako roboshi, sarea baba bako roboshi, sarea baba bako roboshi, sarea baba bako roboshi. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Your next prayer. We are still destroying all glory killers. Father, every attack on my destiny out of jealousy, I destroy in Jesus' name. As you help David overcome Saul. Help me, Lord. It was jealousy that made Saul want to kill David. David had a destiny upon his life. 
And Saul saw the manifestation, the beginnings of the manifestation. He got jealous and wanted to destroy him. Many of us, the, what we are facing is people hating us out of jealousy. They seem to find that no matter what, somehow, 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 we are able to make it. So we are going to pray because of that. They want to kill us or destroy our glory so we don't get there. So you pray, Father, every attack on my destiny out of jealousy, I destroy in Jesus' name. As you help David overcome Saul, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help my family. Help your church. Every attack of against our destiny. Emanating out of jealousy. Father, I destroy. I command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. You have begun to help David to overcome. He overcame Saul. Father, I will overcome. We will overcome in the name of Jesus. Every attack on my destiny, out of jealousy, I destroy in Jesus' name. As you help David overcome Saul, you will help me, Lord. Every attack against my life, against my destiny, every attack against our glory, motivated by jealousy. Ah, Baba, you are the God who delivered David from the hand of Saul. You will deliver me. You will deliver us. Father, whether it is somebody senior to me or somebody junior to me, the name is jealousy. Every attack against my life, every attack against our life and our glory as a result of jealousy. Father, Lord, destroy it. I command it to be destroyed. You are the God who helps David overcome Saul. You will help us. You will help us, Lord. You will help us, Lord. You will help us, Lord. Because if you don't help us, nobody else can help us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Some people, the attack on our life and our destiny is as a result of workplace wickedness. It is in the workplace and they come out and they want to destroy, they want to prevent it. And we won't promote, we will demote, we will sidetrack, we will sideline, we will undermine. Whichever way it is, you are going to pray. You say, Father, every attack on my life and destiny as a result of workplace wickedness, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. As you helped Daniel, help me, Lord. Brother, you must remember, not only did God deliver Daniel, God destroyed every single one of them, including their family. Every single one <coughs> who was involved in the workplace attack, the workplace wickedness, God destroyed. So you pray, Father, every attack on my life, and destiny, every attack over of my, of my glory, as a result of workplace wickedness, I destroy in Jesus' name. As you helped Daniel, help me, Lord. You helped Daniel greatly. Daniel overcame, Father. You helped him greatly. You destroyed all the enemies that were fighting him. All the all the, all of the conspirators, all the coup plotters. You destroyed them with their family, you left no trace of them so that Daniel could have permanent victory to be who you wanted him to be. Father, Lord, by the same token, after the same way you delivered Daniel, deliver me, deliver each of us, Father, from all of those who want to kill our glory. They see that you are causing our glory to shine. They see that you are causing our work to shine. And because of that, they want to kill us. Father, every workplace, every attack on our lives and destiny as a result of workplace workplace wickedness. Father, I destroy in the name of Jesus. As you help Daniel, you will help us. Workplace wickedness that wants to destroy our glory, that wants to prevent our glory from shining, that wants to prevent what the Lord wants to happen in our lives. Father, I destroy it. I destroy it. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Father, I destroy it. I destroy it. I destroy it. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The next, we are still destroying the glory killers. Those who don't want your glory to shine, we are still destroying them. The next one, there are times when it is we who are careless. You didn't mean to do something wrong, but you are careless. You are not mindful. At times, we are not mindful. At times, we are not sensitive. And the same would have overcome us before we know. Or at times, it is, it is a weakness in our lives that we did not deal with. It's the same thing that happened with Samson. He had weaknesses in his life that he did not deal with. But the merciful God, even after it appeared Samson had lost it all, caused his hair to begin to grow. And the strength of Samson came back. So we we'll pray, Father, I come against every form of carelessness in my life. I command it to cease over my life in Jesus' name. You caused the hair of Samson to grow again. Help me too, Lord. I will repeat the prayer. Father, I come against every form of carelessness in my life. I command it to cease over my life in Jesus' name. Help me to overcome, Father. You cause the hair of Samson to grow again. Help me too, Lord. Brethren, pray. Brethren, pray. Pray that God will help you with every form of carelessness. Every every weakness in your life that you didn't deal with. Any way by which I'm careless, Lord. Any way by which any one of us is careless. Father, please help us. Help us, Lord. You are the God who caused the hair of Samson to grow again. His hair grew again until the strength returned. The strength he had lost out of careless behavior. Father, Lord, please help us. Help us, O God Almighty, every kind of carelessness in my life. Please, Father, deliver me from it. And every kind of weakness that I should have dealt with that I didn't deal with, Father, please deliver me. Don't let it, don't let it cause problems for me. Let it cease over my life, Father. Just as you cause the hair of Samson to grow again, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Every kind of carelessness, every kind of of lack of sensitivity that could lead me into trouble, that could lead me into problems. Father, please deliver me from it. Lord, I want the glory of my latter house to be greater than the former. Let me not be the one who will cause uh, uh, me to lose my glory. Let me not be the one who will be responsible for loss of glory. Father, Father, every form of carelessness in my life every lack of sensitivity every weakness that I should have dealt with that I didn't deal with Father Lord I pray cause it to seize over my life you help Samson you cause his hair to grow again Father help me Lord help each and every one of us Father issues we should have dealt with that we didn't deal with Father please help us help us Lord thank you Father in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Next, we are going to pray because arrows of all kinds may be firing. So we are going to pray, Father, every arrow of whatever sort fired against me and my destiny, I return to sender in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Father, every arrow of whatever sort fired against me and my destiny, I return to sender in the name of Jesus. There are times when arrows are fired, brethren, from unexpected places. So we are going to pray. Father, every arrow of whatever sort fired against me and my destiny, I return to sender in Jesus' name. Father, every arrow fired against me, fired against my family, fired against my home, fired against the work you've committed into my hands, fired against our destiny, fired against your church. Baba, we return to sender in the name of Jesus. We remind you of your word that says no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. Father, every weapon, wherever they may be fashioned it, whether it is in the air, whether it is in the sky, whether it is on the earth, whether it is underneath the earth, whether it is in the sea, wherever they may be fashioning it, Father, every arrow, every arrow of whatever sort, fired against me, fired against my family, fired against the home, fired against the work you've committed into my hands, fired against our ministry, fired against your church, fired against us in our various works, Father God Almighty, I return to sender, wherever they may be coming from, I say return to sender in the name of 
of Jesus. Every arrow, every arrow, every arrow, every arrow fired against me, every arrow fired against us. I return to sender. I return to sender. Wherever you may be coming from, you go back. I return you to sender. Every arrow fired against the church. I return you to sender. Every arrow fired against each of our lives. I return to sender. Every arrow fired against our family. I return to sender in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. The last of the prayer points over the glory killers that we're destroying. There are those who want to exchange our glory. Some people, out of whatever, they want to take the glory of one child or glory of somebody and exchange with the other. Look at what happened when Jesus with the, he was there with 12 disciples. And then the, the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came and said, no, ah, when you get to heaven, forget all these other ones. So let it be my sons who will sit on your left and on your right. Ah, That means it's like saying it doesn't matter. Even if any one of them is higher than any of them, pull them down. No, no, no. So you are going to pray, Father, Every activity of glory exchanges over my life. I terminate it now in Jesus' name. My glory will not be exchanged in Jesus' name. I repeat the prayer. Father, every activity of glory exchanges over my life. I terminate it now in Jesus' name. My glory shall not be exchanged in Jesus' name. Sarabashi, pray, brethren, pray, pray. Your glory will not be exchanged. Sarabashi, nobody will take your glory. Nobody will steal your glory. Nobody will take your glory and put it upon himself, and you'll be going down while they'll be rising. Nobody will take your glory and put it upon somebody else. No, Father, in the name of Jesus, every exchange of glory, every glory exchanges, wanting to walk over my life over my family, over my home, every glory exchanger that wants to walk over the church, over the work you have committed into our hands, to change the glory, ba 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 I destroy, I come against them, I come against you, I terminate the activities now, in the name of Jesus. Father, every activity of glory exchangers over my life, over the work you've committed into my hands, over my destiny, every activity of glory exchanges over your church that wants to exchange the glory of the, the, the Rose of Sharon Parish. Ah, Baba, I come against it. I come against it. It will not happen. It will not happen in the name of Jesus. Every activity of glory exchanges that want to exchange our glory. Oh, I want to change it with shame. Lie, lie. It will not happen. I terminate it now in Jesus' name. My glory will not be exchanged in Jesus' name. Shame will not be my end. Rather, shame shall be the, the end of fools in the name of Jesus. All the glory exchangers, it is you that will end up in shame in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, the next prayer we are going to pray. There are times when the enemy deliberately puts roadblocks along the way, either to cause you to arrive where you are going late, or for you not to be even able to go. That by the time you do spiritual warfare and blast and get your way through, you suddenly find that either you are too tired to go on, or you are not able to, or they say it's too late, it will not happen. So you will pray. We will pray. We say, Father, Every roadblock that the enemy has placed along my way, I blast it off now in the name of Jesus. I will say the prayer again. Father, every roadblock of the enemy along my way, I blast it off in the name of Jesus. Remember in Isaiah 45, God says, I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. So you are going to pray, Father, every roadblock, of the enemy along my way. I blast it off in Jesus' name. I cut off the gates of brass. 
I destroy the bars of iron, Father. Every roadblock of whatever kind that the enemy has put along my way so that I will not reach where I'm supposed to reach. But I blast it out of the way. I blast it with the spiritual dynamite, with the dynamite of the Holy Spirit. I blast it out of the way. Every roadblock of the enemy along my way, along the way of members of my family, along the, along the way of the church, I blast it off. I blast it off in the name of Jesus. Every roadblock of the enemy, I blast it off because it is written in your word. And I said, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. That is your word, Lord. So, I pray that every roadblock of the enemy along my way, Lord, I blast it off. I command it to be broken in pieces and cut asunder in the name of Jesus. Sarea Bako Robushi, Sarea Baba Bako Robushi, Era Baba Bako Robushi, Era Baba Bako Robushi, Sarea Baba Bako Robushi, every roadblock of the enemy along my way. I blast it off in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I say our time is fast running. Your next prayer quickly. You say, Father, begin to make a way for me through the wilderness in Jesus' name. Because once God has blasted every roadblock, then he begins to make a way through the wilderness. Father, make a way for me, even where there seems to be no way. Make a way for me through the, the wilderness. Give me streams in the desert and rivers in the wilderness. Father, begin to make a way for me through the wilderness. Make a way for me where there seems to be no way. Father, Lord, begin to make a way for me. Begin to make a way for us. Begin to make a way for your church. Begin to make a way for us. Begin to make a way for us. Begin to make a way for us through the wilderness. Father, through the desert where there seems to be no way you are our way maker make a way for us thank you father in jesus name we have prayed the next prayer father shine your light along my path so i will see your leading clearly in jesus name because when the light of god shines you will see your way you will know where you are going and then the red the enemy will not be able to trap you so you pray father shine your light along my path so I will see your leading clearly in Jesus' name. Father, shine your light along my path, along the path of the church, along the path of my family, along the path of my destiny. Shine your light clearly, 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 Lord, along my path. Shine your light, shine my, your light. Take me out of darkness. Take me out of obscurity and shine your light, Father, so I can see your leading clearly in Jesus' name. Sarea bako roboshe. Sarea baba bako roboshe. Kerea baba roboshe. And I will add to that prayer. Father, let your light shine and erase every disorder in my life in Jesus' name. So I will make those two prayers one. Father, shine your light along my path so I will see your leading clearly and remove every, erase every disorder in my life in Jesus' name. Sarea Bako Roboshi Baba, shine your light along my path. Let me see your leading clearly. And so erase every disorder in my life. Everything that had not made sense. Everything that had been confusing. Everything that I wasn't sure of. Father, as you shine your light, make your way plain for me. And remove every kind of disorder that I will know what you want me to do. <coughs> I will know which way you want me to go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Just a few more prayer points. I may need to rush a bit. Then your next prayer, you say, Father, send me helpers of my destiny speedily and let them locate me without any problem in Jesus' name. Brethren, if the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former, then it's not something you can achieve on your own. We need the help of God and the human helpers that God will send around us. So pray, Father, Send helpers of my destiny speedily and let them locate me without any problem in Jesus' name. Pray, brethren, pray. Father, send helpers of my destiny speedily and let them locate me without any problem in Jesus' name. Father, please send helpers of my destiny speedily and let them locate me without any problem in Jesus' name. Help us of my destiny. Send them to me, Father. Send them to me speedily. Let them locate me without any problems. And let them deliver that which you want them to deliver into my life, into our lives, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Since we said, God said, 
the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former it means he wants to do a new beginning so we are going to pray you say father do something new in my life something miraculous something glorious something wonderful in jesus name pray brethren father do something new in my life as you've removed the glory killers father as you've removed the roadblocks father as you are making a way for me do something new do something new in my life something miraculous something glorious something wonderful in the name of jesus something that will surprise me and i will shock that will surprise me and surprise my friends i will shock my enemies and they'll wonder how did you pass how did you make it we thought we had put roadblocks ah but i do something new something new in my life something miraculous something glorious something wonderful in my life in my home in the life of members of my family in your church father do something new do something new thank you father in jesus name we have prayed now our last prayer before i round up you pray you say father let the glory of my latter house be tremendously greater than the former in jesus name i repeat father let the glory of my latter house be tremendously greater than the former in jesus name pray brethren saria baba bako roboshi saria baba bako roboshi rebesi indra baba bako roboshi baba mio let the glory of my latter house let it be tremendously greater than the former in jesus name the glory of our latter house the glory of our latter house as a family the glory of our latter house as a church saria baba bako roboshi baba mio let it be tremendously greater let it be tremendously greater than the former in jesus name even the restoration that you are giving to us let it be tremendously tremendously greater than what you had and what you have ever seen or experienced before thank you father in jesus name we have prayed our father and our god we want to thank you we thank you lord because you are the prayer answering god we praise you we bless you we worship you because we know you have heard us and you have you are answering our prayers even right now father lord we thank you for destroying every glory killer in our lives all those who want to exchange our glory thank you because you have put an end to them father lord we thank you because every roadblock that the enemy has placed along our way you have removed it thank you because you've begun to make a way for us where there is no way thank you because you are going to do in each of our lives something great something miraculous something wonderful something special thank you father because at the end the glory of our latter house will be greater than the former father we still in the blood of jesus all of that which you have done for us and we say shall be permanent our restoration shall be permanent father god almighty our help shall be permanent thank you for the destiny help us thank you for causing the eyes of our enlightened of our understanding to be enlightened thank you for removing destiny killers thank you for removing glory killers thank you thank you thank you for giving us destiny help us thank you father thank you lord we give you praise and glory in jesus name we have prayed Amen. 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 Amen.